Right, if I do this and boom, and then do that, I could hear you. <laughs> you have to cuddle in, don't you? You have to sit in each other. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the admin. Can everyone hear Matt and Lauren? Well, if you guys just... Hello, hello. hello. One, two, one, two. I, I can hear them. If you want me to bump their volume up, I can. So just let me know if you if you can't hear them properly. Oh, I don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll probably talk too loud. <laughs> How have you been? You all right? Yeah, good, good thank you. I'm, I'm modelling my beard on uh, Matt. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh this is matt and lauren from lazy dog let's i've got i've got a couple of little things ready uh which one is it that one we can just put that on the bottom of the screen hopefully so you can go you can go and find them online on instagram uh these are their lovely lovely rums when did you guys start uh 2020 lockdown 2020 actually oh, so, you were uh, lockdown so, rum uh, sorry uh you were lockdown rum we are yeah. we are 100 percent oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen plenty of lockdown babies, but not too many lockdown rums. So that's oh, quite yeah, good. Worry, it's none of them. <laughs> Come on there, tell us all about these. What whichever however you want to start this off. I've got there'll be loads and loads of questions coming up. I know that, but tell us about you, tell us about your rum, tell us your story. What is it? I'm gonna I've I've not tasted these yet. I had to drown them up. I've not tasted them. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to this. Go for it. Go for it. Who's the boss? Lauren. <laughs> 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 whose idea? Um, whose idea was it? Uh, it was my idea. Um, right. And I was in the background with my dad learning how to do it, and just basically we made probably about six or eight months worth of terrible rum before we got a got a sort of a grasp of what we were doing, how we were going to do it, and and uh, and what we wanted to do for for the business really so uh, so yeah i i spent a lot of time uh heading books heading websites forums you know patents from 1800s just trying to get a grisp, grasp of what was going on in the rum market then what's going on in the rum market now um drinking a lot of other people's rums some that we enjoyed some that we didn't and then sort of noting down what we liked about them what we didn't like about them and what we wanted to bring forward as our product really um and then yeah then as far as branding was concerned we kind of wanted to do something completely different to everything that you've got behind you there so um we're from a mining town in leicestershire so We've got no sea, we've got no pirate heritage, we've got no, we haven't really got any sunshine most of the time, to be fair. So anything Caribbean, nautical or pirate felt a little bit disingenuous. So um, as I said, from a mining town in Colville, uh, in Colville and Leicestershire, so um, Black Bottle was a, was a sort of a, a nod to the heritage there. I'm born and bred. Um, and uh, Gino is the face of it. So Gino was our Bracco Italiano um, dog at the time. His face was better on a bottle than mine was ever going to be. So, uh, so, so, yeah, we were sat there one night trying to think of what we wanted to call the business, what we wanted to, you know, sort of brand it like. And he was sat in the corner, as he always used to be, um, snoring. <laughs> so he used to sleep 20 hours a day. And it just felt that, you know, if we were going to do something completely off the wall and completely different to everyone else, then why not include him in it in that he was a massive part of our life as well. So, so, uh, so yeah, he's, uh, he's immortalised on the bottle of, uh, of, wow. some, uh, of some British rum. So, so he's uh, sorry to bring this up, but he's not no longer with us. Is that no, right? no. La right. Last August, we lost him. He was um, he was very poorly, which we didn't realise oh. for a long time. Um, so yeah, we uh, lost him in August. We've since rehomed another Bracco. Um, so February this year, we rehomed another one called Solomon. Um, who's asleep who's, on the sofa? Yeah, he's so asleep. He's, on the sofa. he's a fool at least. <laughs> So he is um, very much living up to uh, Gino's legacy of being the next lazy dog. So why not? So did, just going back right to the start there, did I hear? Did, is your dad? Uh, did, did, yeah, I kind of talk now. Is your dad no. a distiller? No, no. no so no, you're, no, you're just that. basically learning. <laughs> no, so we um, we we started from scratch. So um, I hope HMRC aren't watching, but we uh, we built a little still, uh, and we started because because we didn't want to we didn't want to buy anyone else's room and call it our own and and sort of uh, as I said be disingenuous with, with what we're doing we wanted to wanted to do it from the ground up so um we started buying tubs and tubs of molasses learning how to ferment it and then once we'd learn how to ferment it and make it actually do what we wanted it to do then we started 
teaching ourselves how to um, how to distill it. So um, my dad's still a still a big part of it. So he um, he still dips in and helps me ferment. So he doesn't get involved in the in the distillation too much. But, um, but yeah, he does. Uh, he does. I'd say he'll he'll probably chime in with a comment in a minute. But I'd say he does seventy percent of the heavy lifting for the for the fermenting at least. So, <laughs> yeah, still... Is it is he there? Is he? No, he's not. No, he'll be around soon. Yeah, he'll be on. He's learned how to use his laptop. He'll be. Uh, he'll probably be. Uh, wow. Yeah, so we, I, we sort of taught ourselves on the ground up. So how? Well, so so how how long did it take to get from that that first trial to something that was, I don't know, drinkable? Or did you just go? Were you lucky? Like first couple of trials. Um, we were. We. We did a lot of research beforehand. So if you if you can look in the right places, there's a lot of really helpful people around the world that are willing to, um, to to chime in and tell you what not to do, which is which is 75 percent of, of what we needed in the first instance. So don't don't do this. Don't do that. If you do this, you're going to be on a hide into nothing. So doing a lot of research, doing a lot of reading of where not to start helped us, helped us out massively. Um, so. There are some really, really helpful people out there, and um, and for the most part, the distilling community. Even now, you know, we've we've been doing it for, well, I'd say relatively successfully doing it since um, November 2020. Our first rum came out. Uh, even now, you know, we we speak to people in the rum, um, the rum community and the distilling community, and and it's a really helpful environment. And there's a lot of people out there that will go, well, you know, have you thought of speaking to these guys? Have you thought of doing this? Have you thought of doing that? And we tried, we tried to do it in a sort of reciprocal fashion to. To try and help everyone out along the way as well. So, um, wow. so yeah, I spoke, it's a, it's I spoke to uh, I spoke to Tom from Cornish uh, Distilling or whatever you want to call it. But apparently, you lot are all in a big WhatsApp, aren't you? Or you distillers? We're not. Are you? Are oh, you not? We, oh, now you just <laughs> dropped us in it. So we're not. So oh, we're, we're, we're sort of out. Appa- apparently, there's like a big WhatsApp group for all you UK distillers or something. I don't know, but. We oh, did. See, now you've dropped them in it. Maybe, maybe they just don't I like us. Maybe we're yeah, you know, probably. We're not... we'll, we'll sort it out. <laughs> we did meet that... Tom at um, a trade trade show that we did in uh, April time at um, the NEC. So we met him for the first time there, and it was actually really nice to speak to another distiller that was on the same kind of wavelength and had the same ethos as us as well. So yeah. he like we tried um, each other's rums, and he was talking about kind of um yeah his process of of making it and what he did and didn't want to do and it aligned to us so it was so nice to speak to somebody so similar um because we do feel like we're a bit um of a niche area um of the market of rum so yeah we have met him before as it, as in niche as in sort of distilling from scratch in the uk just yeah. from scratch and then also yeah. trying to sort of steer clear from just barreling loads of sugar and loads of loads of stuff into a bottle and, and, and just are these I think they are, but are these unsweetened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what you've yeah, got in front yeah. of you neither of them. Other than obviously yeah. the fermented sugar. Yeah, no, I've got I've got yeah. So that wow, that's that's insane. I'm just gonna there's questions I've got, but I'm just gonna so I don't miss them. There's quite a few sort of popping up in the comments now. Uh Ross, Ross, who's actually in the same postcode as you, I think, uh, wants to yeah. know if you're doing any local pop-ups where's it ross, ross gone we are oh, yeah we are. yeah oh. our, um, oh. this is where lauren takes over it's where lauren's pretty there, there we go so i'll put it on screen that's that's ross he's literally just down the road from you so he's one oh, of our members um yeah we we do we try and do a few every month um this year we've tried to kind of branch out into doing some slightly different events to last year um because of kind of coming out of covid like true COVID lockdowns and stuff, things have kind of changed in terms of what markets kind of work best for us. So, um, and actually a, an Instagram post went out today with a list of our confirmed events oh, wow. for the rest of the year. So um, yeah, Ross and anyone else can check out that. Wow. What we do, if Ross uh, in particular, being local, if he knows of any more Leicestershire based events, that would be very helpful for us because we seem to struggle to discover um but- Leicester events which is weird seeing as we're not you know we're down the road but um yeah Leicester based events seem hard to find how did you find kind of can just go and sidetrack it here like the run because we first met at Manchester run fest yeah like, how did you find that compared to doing local sort of trade shows and brilliant. stuff? brilliant yeah it yeah, was it was, um, it was insane and um to a certain extent we were both absolutely <laughs> knackered by the time we're intense. finished um but uh it, it was great because we normally you know gin gin is obviously as big as it is still so when you go to a just a general food and drink event there's a lot of people that will come along and they'll go oh is it gin oh i don't really like rum or 
I've had a bad experience when I was 14 and I drank too much. Then you, so you've, got, you've sort of got that to get over with a, with some of the some of the sort of customers before you even get the chance yeah. to get them to try it. But the Manchester Rum Festival was great because everyone was there because they loved rum and you could tell them about the product and they would they'd listen to it in the first instance and they'd be able to appreciate what we're trying to do and why it's so niche in the market. So getting out there and speaking to people that are like minded and they're interested and they uh, and they're, they're already invested in it was brilliant. And then obviously, yeah, meeting, meeting, you, meeting your good self and then some of the other people that we get, came to along the way that were just so enthusiastic. And, yeah. you know, when when you've had a, a long week beforehand trying to just get through as much product into into bottles as you can, or you've had, you know, when we when we run a spirit run, it's a 12 or 13 hour day and you have a few of them and it sort of builds up on you and you get a little bit downtrodden from it. And then you speak to people like yourself and people at the Rum Festival and it makes it all worthwhile. So you get to speak to people and they're so enthusiastic about it and it just does really sort of build you back up it's, again to realise why like, you're doing it. it. It brings it home, doesn't it? It's, it's like one. It's yeah. so different. I, keep, I don't want to bash gin, but I do. But you know, it's so different because everyone's just one big happy family with rum. It's, yeah. it's a bizarre thing to sort of describe, but it is. You know, it's, it's, let's face it, it's a cooler spirit, isn't it? You know, we can. It is. We, we can beat around it all we like, but at the end of the day, rum, rum's the one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I've I've kind of had a little stalk of your Instagram, so I can kind of gauge it. But I just want to try and get the the size of your distillery i think i think i've got it nailed i don't want to say too much just in case you don't want it sort of public but no it, it's honestly, quite... honestly steve we, one thing you'll realize from us i mean we've met a few times but is, we're about is as, it... we're about as open and honest as it's possible to be so I, is I that in go... your back garden it, yeah it used to be a gym yeah so i built it as a gym about <laughs> when we first moved into the house about eight years ago uh built it as a gym then we had a little one so clearly neither of us were using it very much anymore uh, and lockdown came along and we'd always planned to um, to lose it as a gym and have it as an office space or, or, or whatever else it was. So when we decided to finally sort of go all in, um, yeah, we, we ripped it out and turned it into um, turned it into a distillery. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, you know, a gym, it's going to be massive. No, nah, it's not. So it's it's um, I was just going to say it looks about 12 meters or 12 foot or whatever. Where are we? Oh, 12 meters. Yeah, but maybe 12, 12 foot, maybe. So yeah. it's probably about four points. Uh, well, it, it, because it used to be a surveyor. Uh, I used to be a QS, so I used to be a money man. So it's built based on uh, the longest length of timber that I could get on the back of a wagon. So it's 4.8 metres long, uh, <laughs> which is the full length of what I could get at the time. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's about three and a half metres deep. So That's it's crazy. Uh, it's, so it's, so how much, how many bottles or, or uh, let's, break, yeah, let's break it down into bottles. How many bottles can you distill a week? Because it's on that, the white, the silver, I, what, sorry, I will start calling it silver. I call it white for some reason. But right, right. that's your, it's unaged, isn't it? Or do you rest yeah, it at so all for any time? It's, yeah, so it is a, it's aged, but it's not, it's never seen a cask. So it sees, yeah. um, it probably sees about six to nine months um, in stainless. Oh, okay. That we, store, that we store in there. So, so what you've got in there is the silver. Um, so that's probably, a, that back, that's probably about nine month old silver. Um, so we, we store it wow. in silver. I didn't realise that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so uh, to be honest with you, I can I can touch everything to make that rum. I can stand in the middle of the distillery and I can touch every process. Just move by your hands, hands around. around. <laughs> so, so where, yeah, where the right. flipping hell do you store it then? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so we're not we're not really you got good. bottles properly bed up. Yeah, we've got, a garage, we've got a garage full of gear. We've got um, we've got an outhouse to the side that's full of gear. That's full of bottles. We've got um, my mum and my mum and dad store all the molasses before it comes over here. Uh, my brother for the slows my brother was storing all the slows so it's uh, we are moving very well hopefully very soon if we can get a, a, um, get an agreement over the line but yeah it's um it's it's from very humble beginnings it's uh, yeah as I, say, I can touch everything in the process from standing in the middle of the distillery it's, uh, it's so it's, so so when you start all right so when, when you we know we appreciate lockdown we get all that the business plans sort of go out the window a little bit but sort of take i don't know year one like what that's when I've kind of assumed that you've kind of got a grand or not a grand plan, but some form of plan. Like where, like how, what's the sort of growth? What sort of growth are you looking at? You'd looking like two, three years from now to be having a, a bigger distillery or, or, or what? What's yeah, We're trying to get into a bigger distillery now. So um, I'm fortunate enough to be from a property background. So I was used to work for a, quite a, quite a big, well, the big, one of the biggest house builders. So we're trying to, we're trying to do some arrangements along the way at the minute to try and buy a, a property from via them, which may or may not come off. Wow. Um, so we're trying at the minute to get, to get it out of here because the size is, um, it's, yeah, it is, it is a strangle. It's got a stranglehold on us at the minute in that we, we were very strangled as to what we can get into bottles. So we tend to store a lot in bulk. Um, and then 
bottle a batch and get it out and then bottle a batch and get it out so it, we we don't sit on you know 500 cases of any product for instance yeah. you know we, we in our in the distillery once it's once it's once it's bottled the duty's paid and it's out of there and it's stored elsewhere um, right okay Space for it. so we've got we cask in there so we've got um we've got a rack with a load of cask in there that we're that we're trying to put away for um to sort of build up our, our sort of casking program um I, I was just going to touch on that because you have it's not available at the moment but you have got a gold rum which is right. the silver that's car how like how long has that been aged for? uh so that one that was in a cask for nine or ten months that one was the, the first wow. one was so we'll, we'll have some more that will come forward so as the gold one i saw one of the comments pop up where yeah. it's going to come back in where it's going to come back in stock okay. there will be there will be some more come back in for probably for the christmas run so it'll probably end up being that we'll take it um obviously try it but take it circa september um so we'll probably try and get that bottled for september then for october november december run so that can then come back forward again but because it's because it is only a nine or ten month old product product we're trying to leave more away to be a one two three year old rather than taking it now to sort of just get a quick mm. a quick batch through so we we would have taken more gold um but i think by leaving it a little bit longer um it will be a bit more characterful it will be a bit deeper um so we are trying to sort of hold okay. back on what would have been the gold to try and be sort of a year old two year old um towards nice. the end of the year there's, there's a cool question here from Kevin. I'm just going to pop this up screen. This is a few minutes ago. Sorry, Kevin. How hard is it to trust oh, your own taste cool. buds? <laughs> Incredibly difficult. <Yeah. laughs> we're, we're like, we were very popular with friends and family when, um, when it first started. <laughs> yeah. I've got, uh, I cut my teeth drinking, um, you know, old Jay and, um, and yes. uh, Gary when, uh, when I had friends at uni up in, up in Hull that, We'd just, you know, go out for a night out and it'd be old Jay and Coke and you wonder why you got fillings, you know, six months later. Um, so, you know, we, we had friends that were very interested in rum. Um, family members, you know, my, my brother's probably our, still our biggest, the, the biggest purchaser. I'll get a phone call off him on a Friday night and it'll be, I'm swinging by, you got much stock in. Um, so uh, so he he and family members and my dad obviously being part of it and, and friends and family and, and extended friends that, um, that all dipped in and helped out with you know just samples in the post to see whether it was going to work or 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 whatnot so we 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 worked it forward to to a point where we thought we would enjoy drinking it um and then yeah a bit of market research but that was one of the good things about lockdown in that we got our own market research with our friends family ourselves but then also because we couldn't just go out and speak to wholesalers we couldn't just go out to speak to pubs we spoke to so many people in the general public that would come and try it and they go oh you know I, I, I don't really like this or maybe I don't really like that so you know it's it's not the case that what you're drinking now is exactly the same as what we what our first batch one bottle one of, mm. of spiced would have been or batch one bottle one of the silver would have been because you know we're not we're not aiming for necessarily although we are we're not necessarily aiming to keep everything exactly the same we're trying to improve everything as we go and as we build on knowledge and as we build um as build as we build on the flavor profile as well you know the, the spice is now fixed but batch one, batch two, batch three were quite different along the way. You know, there were bits of it that we didn't really that I that I liked. You know, the ba batch one was really quite heavy or even heavier in um, in orange than it is now, um, and that was something that I really enjoyed. Um, and then so, we spoke to people, and people were saying, you know, maybe it's a little bit too orangey. Maybe we'd like to rein that back in. Maybe we need a little bit more vanilla. So, um, so yeah, getting out and speaking to people and just you know, bottle the bottles that you've got there. We we probably went through cases and cases and cases of just giving them away and letting people just give it a, give it a whirl and try it and come and speak to us about it, which. You know from a business point of view it's not particularly great because you're giving stuff away but from a knowledge point of view and from a long-term sort of flavor point of view it was it was just brilliant for yeah. us to be fair. yeah and i think yeah. going back to that that question that you do i think we because we're not from um a spirits background as well or even food and drink i think we've realized as well that it does come down really to personal preference so always our first aim was well we need to sell something that we like to drink because otherwise that's a really hard sell like you know we're not going to try and flog something that we don't even like <laughs> and then yeah as Matt said then the next stage was to put it out to real people that potentially could be customers to see whether they like it as well and then going down the kind of a uh, judging and awards route I don't know. I have a bit of a kind of mixed feeling about it that surely ultimately it still comes down to personal preference and palate. Like everyone's palate is different and 
people have a different palette dependent on what they're used to you know people build up certain preferences for things so if they try something slightly different then they're not probably going to like it as much so then it, you know that's going to be a harder win so for us um kind of we will enter awards and stuff and we'll see what that brings us but to be honest we we kind of want everyone to know the story behind yeah. us as well as just what the rum tastes like um because that's just as important for yeah. us because we are in such a niche market of a true british I think, rum i think that's the one isn't it because yeah. because when we when we do speak to rum fans in particular as well when, when we're out and about mm. the fact that it is unsweetened is a massive massive sort of curveball curveball for them because they'll come along and they'll go oh i love rum we'll go oh what do you drink Oh, I'm just getting working my way through a bottle of Kraken at the minute. And we go, oh, okay, fine. But be aware that this is going to be at the opposite end of the spectrum to a Kraken. Yeah. So if you're going to drink it neat, then obviously it's going to be very different. If you're going to whack a load of Coke into it, it'll probably taste better than Kraken, you know? And we have to sort of explain that. But because, like Lauren says, we are in a bit of a niche environment that we don't want to just come along and, you know, whack more and more and more vanilla into it, whack more and more and more sugar into it and, and make it really syrupy and, and sweet and whack a load of caramel in and make mm. it dark. We are sort of trying to tread a path that is probably a hard one to sell with some people some people mm. will come along and they'll go that's not what i recognize as rum you know i recognize rum as being thick dark caramel sugar and this just isn't it and we'll say you know fair enough you know what what you're saying is exactly right and if you're going to drink some mainstream rums that are out there in the market then what you're saying is bang on if for instance you go out there and you you, you search a little bit more and you find you know you find yourself a four square or you find yourself something you know some more top shelf then you're probably going to realize that what we're offering is probably more like what you should be drinking rather than something that's full of sugar. Mm. Um, but on saying that, you know, they're all they're all really popular products. You know, people people yeah. buy them for a reason and they buy them because they're palatable. So I'm, you know, we don't we don't bash anyone. You know, you you, you want to drink cracker, you drink cracker. You know, we, we, I'm still drinking Shet Sailor Jerry's every now and then. It doesn't, you know, it's still it's still there. It's uh, it's not that we're here saying you shouldn't be buying anything that's got sugar in it. We're just saying we're not making it full of sugar. Just very quickly, because Matt's touched on it. Lauren, go, take me back like three to five years. What did you drink? What was your drink of choice? Um, I did. I would drink rum, especially on okay. kind of nights out. Um, but I was a bit kind of I don't know. That's I used it. to float between spirits. I would, whatever the particular event would take me to, I would have. We had a bit of we dipped in gin, gin didn't yeah. we? And then um, very, very briefly dipped in gin. Um, yeah, and I think. Uh, yeah, we did try quite a few gins, but to be honest, we were trying gins because I would pick a bottle that looked nice um, and thought, oh, you know, gin's gin, mm. I'll just try that, you know, kind of blindly going into it that way. Um, and because of that, and because there's such a, a range of gins we, gins, we would try one once, drink the bottle and never go back to it. Um, whereas then, say, with rum or... Um, there's a particular uh, tequila that I used to drink a lot. You kind of try and then you're like, oh, OK, this this is the one that I like because there's so many variations to it. Um, and I think going back to kind of uh, why we went down the not just British rum, but then unsweetened as well. I think we have to give credit to Matt as well in that he's done so much hard work in producing such a good silver rum or a, well, a white you're gonna say, rum you're gonna try uh, it, it's what, good anyway. yeah so that's what <laughs> I, that's what i think and that's what you know other customers think that have bought it and people that try it that we didn't want to then me take that forward into the other rums and then completely mask it um because again that's going kind of against what we're all about so yeah um yeah we so, kind of want to off the hard work so the white, so you've got essentially you've got four products, even though the gold isn't available. So the white rum, logically, would be the base of right. those. Yeah. And for the other one, for those of you that don't know, the one that's missing is a slow rum. Like, where did the idea of slow rum come from? Well, my, I'm from a because I'm from Leicestershire. My well, I say not because I'm from Leicestershire. Um, my granddad was a big, um, big shooter. So growing up, I was always on a on a shoot somewhere. I used to run a shoot over in a town nearby um not gonna be to everyone's taste obviously um but it was all of from you know from seven eight years old i was always in the back of a land rover with my dad and some dogs or my granddad and some dogs and it was almost you know have a, have a little snifter a slow gin in the, of, of, a, of a cold uh, november afternoon so when this came about it was almost a bit of a nod to nod to that heritage really in that um you know i got brought up on my granddad making slow gin my dad making slow gin 
and um, it just felt right, you know, because the flavour of slow is quite unique. You don't, although it's quite plummy, it's 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 such a such a sort of bespoke flavour, really. Um, not having to compete with the juniper and all of the botanicals that it does do with a gin means that we can then really properly showcase the slow flavour. So yeah. the slow that's not not with you. Um, we only really sweeten it to bring out the flavor of the slows and take a bit of tartness away. So it's not like a slow gym where you're just going to come along, whack some slows in a bottle, just double the flavor, double the amount of um, sugar in it, and then just leave it for a year. We sweeten it to a point where it's just taken the bit, the real bit away. It's still got a tartness to it, and it's not, you know, it's not watered down. It's still at forty percent. We don't, we don't release anything less than forty percent at the minute. Um, but it allows us to really showcase the rum and the slow, really, and that the, the rum's still there. It's still, still, um, it's still quite obviously rum, but the slow flavour can really be appreciated in there as well. Wow. Should have got a bottle of that. That's what I said to you on there. We've got, I don't know, I haven't seen him comment yet, but big, uh, we call him Big G Garai. He's our sort of resident agricole, like anything over £100, that's his territory. And he bought a bottle of slow off you. He's just like, wow, this is fantastic. So no, really, well, I'm, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a little bit gutted. I haven't got a ding, 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 <laughs> get the bottle. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll get one soon. Don't worry. It's, yeah. uh, right, it's, it's, I'm, I'll, be out there, I'll be out there bottling the last. Uh, I think we've probably got about 40 bottles left of, uh, of this one, and then we'll have no more until. Um, probably October, November well, time, when, time. Um, when the when the slows are back. So uh, wow. so yeah, it's uh, but it's a nice one to be fair because no one's had it. So you know we were at the rum festival and people were coming along going what slow rum? Let's try it. So yeah, and, it, and like you say, that one that one for me was the big one because it, it mm. does well, but it never outsells the spiced. Whereas at the rum show, you know, it was it was right on the heels of um, of the slow and uh, right on the heels of the of the spiced. And it was um, yeah, it was it was just amazing that people coming along going. Well, I've, I've never tried it. I never even conceived of it as a as a premise. But yeah, I like it. Can I have a bottle, <laughs> which is uh, <laughs> yeah, great. You know, so cool. it's really good. Right, I'm going to dive in and taste it. It's just there's a couple of comments I can see popping in, but there is a couple of other questions I just quickly want to touch in. One was uh, we've I think we've covered that, I th but I think Scott came in a bit later. So the, the, can you see that on screen? It's the gold yeah. in words. Yeah. So yeah. So it's, it's uh, yeah. Well, it's in it's in it's in oak. It's in um, it's an American oak, and uh, I don't know if I can name drop brands that aren't that aren't ours, yeah. but it's it's in um, former wild turkey. Um, oh, oh wow! I used to I used to used to drink a lot of whiskey before we sort of dipped our toe into um, gins. Um, when I was at uni and drinking rum, if I was drinking a neat spirit, it would always be a whiskey. So me and my dad used to work our way through like sort of single malts and bourbons and whatnot. So. Um, so wild turkey was one that I always liked. Got friends who used to like it as well. So when the casks came up, it sort of felt felt right, and it it, it kind of works. The 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 bourbon taking the heat out of the out of the uh, out of the oak, leaving a nice little sort of um, vanilla flurry behind it. It does go really well with the rum. Um, and to be wow. fair, most most rums tend to be, or a lot of good rums tend to be aged in former bourbon casks. And ours is yeah. ours is similar. I, I won't tell you now, but I'll tell you a little story I was chatting to uh, Richard about from Retro, uh, uh, Retribution on Friday. That, that's kind of a cool one, but I won't touch on that now. Uh, Kevin, so Kevin does, I, again, I might hook you two up. That might be a, a, a direct question. Cause Kevin does mobile bars and does a lot of markets and stuff like that. So wants to know about okay. five centiliter bottles and that. So I'll probably hook you two up separately after that. Kevin, remind me. Uh, five centiliter that. bottles will be on the website this week. I uh, awesome. painstakingly uh, filled, waxed, bottled, uh, filled, waxed, and labelled them uh, this last week. Just gone. Wow. Uh, well, we just to answer, just to answer the other question, I've forgotten who it was, but someone said, "Where can I get it from?" There's the website on screen now. Who who asked that? It was about the same time as Kevin. Uh, I've lost it. I've lost it. I've lost it. Someone, Martin Hales. There. Uh, was it Martin? Yeah, Martin. Where can I get some? So that's yes. the distillery on screen. Now, Website, we right. we in the UK, and uh, and then yeah, there's a few local stockists as well. So if you are in the Greater Leicestershire area, it's in it's in a few Leicestershire um, spaces. Uh, trying to branch out now. Now everything's open, and you know we've all forgotten about COVID, and it's you know we've it's it's finished into it, apparently. Uh, but uh, we are trying to get out now into uh, into more outlets and more bars, more restaurants, more uh, more stockists. Nice, nice. Right, people are diving in, which they should have done. I should have said, just go ahead and taste it. Yeah, we've got some, we've got I'll some awesome comments here. Right, so Scott, Scott, I'll big Scott. Scott's been on quite a bit of a rum journey with us. Um, there we go. I wouldn't go for a neat white usually, but this silver is rather nice. That was exactly my uh, reaction when I tasted this at Rum Fest. I do like white rums neat. I love white rums neat. I think I think there should be a big movement for drinking white rum or silver rum, whatever you want to call it, neat. Get, I love if it. You get a good white rum. I don't think uh, you know. People drink people drink neat vodka. 
Um, and you know, I'll, I'll drink and eat vodka if it's a decent one. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a reason not to. I think it tends to be if you get a nice little bit of, get a bit of ice and you get a little bit of melt, it tends to loosen the spirit up quite nicely. I think that is a, that is a good one to, if you are just after something as a bit of a, um, as a bit of a tipple and you haven't got anything, the silver, the silver on ice is, uh, is rather nice. I've just got a little bit of ice in there. We've got Tom. What did Tom say? Tom's having a, enjoying the smell. This is just, it's so lovely and creamy and light and. Mm. I'll, I'll read the guys what it's got in the back of the bottle just so they can see it. Uh, molasses, yeast, water, and uh, and thyme. Uh, super smooth with buttery caramel aromas and flavours of cashew and nougat. I like that. Cashew and nougat. It's, it fascinates me how people get different... And this is this is the thing, yeah. you know, it all, I, I've only just come back today to to retaste the silver that um I mean I don't I don't I do drink the silver, but I don't I, I won't sort of sit there and, and rewrite notes and stuff for it. But I sat there earlier and I said to Laura, I was like, honestly, it probably gets I probably appreciate it more yeah. each time I try it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find I'll go and I'll find something more in there. I mean, I was trying it earlier and I and I was um you know, I was finding I was finding fruit, I was finding um, you know, I've just got my notes here now. And, uh, and and sort of uh, marzipan and fruit cake in there, and it's you know it, the the difference that you can get between you know trying something now and you'll try it again in a few weeks time, or you'll or you'll come back and it will and, and the spirit changes for you. It's quite uh, it's quite interesting. I heard that Scott Scott wants to come along for a distillery tour. I just saw that. <laughs> 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 may, may, maybe maybe in a year or so. <laughs> That's a, I just I'm just looking at some of these other comments. I tell you what we'll do because we won't keep you on here all night. For my for my lot, they're doing the taste along. We'll probably dive into Rumex app uh, a bit later, probably about half an hour or so, or whatever, and do that. Because we I don't know if you've ever seen this, but it's an awesome app that a couple of German guys have created uh, okay. called Rumex, and it's basically this massive database of rum. But it allows people to create accounts and just go in, not well score it essentially, but tasting notes more than anything. You get nice. people that get score it out of hundred, but it's brilliant for tasting notes and all that sort of stuff. Oh, so I added I added both of your rums to the app, uh, mm. so they're on there now. So we can all go through and do a. I'll send you the links oh, to it. Later. Oh, no, I, feel, I feel like I should have known about this now. <laughs> it's honestly, it's a brilliant, brilliant app. I chat to Oliver quite a lot uh, that sort of developed it, and it's just now been released in the US and Canada and all that sort of stuff. Nice. But it's it's a genius app. So I have added this these both of these to that. Um, and then we'll, so we'll do some scores and uh, like tasting notes and it's got like spider grams or spider wheel spider chance whatever you want to call them of yeah. like fruity sweet nutty witty oh, we'll all that sort of stuff yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely yeah. give it a, give it a go it's it's, uh, it's yeah. really it's a great one to do research for other rums and stuff like yeah. that as well it's as I said, I'm, I'm a, to, as, at the minute i'm a bit of a luddite as far as social media is concerned and pretty much anything else if it doesn't involve if it doesn't happen in that four meter by three meter world out there it's um, <laughs> It's there's not there's not a lot in my uh, on my calendar. This is absolutely delicious. I'm I'm not going to do this as a daiquiri tonight, but I've got a video mm -hmm. coming up where well, be three or four videos where I'm doing like a white rum daiquiri off, and just nice. it won't necessarily be a grand winner, but I just kind of want to. I've got about twenty two white rums behind it now, and I just want to do like one big daiquiri off. So I'm going to leave that. I've got a few mixes. I've got which one was it? Spiked cloudy lemonade. Is that the that's the silver one. I've got some of this. I'm quite interested in this, actually. There we go. So the spiked, this was on your website. So spiked cloudy lemonade was uh, just uh, cloudy lemonade, but garnished with lemon and ginger. Now, yeah. I've got the ginger, but I've got a very dry, fever trees, very dry sort of Sicilian lemonade. So I'm just going to do a little bar spoon of, uh, or even less, of um, uh, ginger syrup in there. I'm we did uh, we, we, some of the events that we go to, with the, uh, where we're allowed to serve cocktails and whatnot. We did, uh, we had a, quite a, an enthusiastic lady come to us for a few, uh, quite a few mojitos, and said that it makes the best mojito she'd ever tasted. So uh, yeah, although she yeah. had quite a few mojitos at that point, so read that uh, read into that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I can totally see that. I know that's going to score really, really well with me for a daiquiri because that is exactly the sort of rum I like in a daiquiri. Yeah. That sort of really lush, uh, sort of creamy sort of rum. Because I've got some here that are very. I don't. I do like Jamaican rums, but sometimes they get a little bit um, heavy. What what sort of still do you use? I know you said you bought it, but what what is the still? Oh, you uh, built it. Sorry, it's a bit of a hybrid, really, and it's a it's a three plate column still. Um, but because it's only three right. plate, we don't we don't lose sort of all the character along the way. Um, so it lets us take off a fairly decent ABV. So what you've got in front of you comes off at anywhere from depending on what we charge, what the what the ABV of the charge is, it comes off anywhere from eighty nine to sort of ninety one percent. 
um, and then we'll we'll stop taking at sort of 87, 86. Then we when we take again for um, for a, a bit of a, a small sort of portion of tails in there because that's where the where the fruit tends to come from in in the tail. So we sort of take, stop, take, and then and then yeah. So so it's a it's a three plate column still, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it lets us lets us sort of have a bit of best of both worlds. That's a great shout. That is <laughs> so. so that also I've done because that's quite dry. I've just and I've got no proper ginger. I've just done literally like a quarter of because I've got a little, I've got a little diddy glasses there. <laughs> there's just a little, tu little touch of ginger syrup in there, and that is amazing. I love that. It's kind of like that long, it's like a long daiquiri, but subtle hint of ginger. That's yeah, yeah. love that. What was the other one? There's another one here. What was the other one? I've got I've got some grapefruit juice. But I'm going to dive into the spice drum. I'm going to do that paloma well, in a second. Yeah, spice yeah. paloma. I'm yeah, really keen to do that. Perfect. I've got. I've got pink grapefruit juice. I hope that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> we're not we're not precious, Steve. Yeah. Right. You're not precious. You're not precious. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to keep an eye on any others. Any other comments and questions in here? No, question. I, I know that we've seen that. We've seen that. Right. That's I love that white rum. <clears throat> that is that's what I said to you. I, I'll be open and honest. I've told you this, haven't I? When, yeah. Um, yeah. When, I'm only really calling for a public apology, Steve, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so what I said to the guy, I, in truth, I'd only seen this sort of once before and I kind of ignored it. And then I saw it in Manchester Rum Fest and I walked past it two or three times because the bottle, the brand, I wouldn't say put me off, but I was expecting it to not be what it is. And then... Uh, bless him, Dwight from Rum the Show on Instagram, and he does rum tastings. He's a UK rum uh, yeah. so like a sommelier, he's one of two UK based rum so a, a rum, like a, a rum sommelier, if you like. He dragged me over, and I was like, Are you sure? And he went, Honestly, mate, this is amazing stuff. So you guys poured me the white, and I was like, Wow, that's really good, yeah. really, really good. And it's it's just one of those things about brands, isn't it? When you got kind of I don't know, when you dive into something like Dorley's or, I don't know, Mount Gay, and it's all these, this classic branding. Yeah. You know, when you see something completely, it just shows us, you know, we're flipping stupid sometimes, don't we? Well, I think that was, that was one of the things we wanted to do, to be fair, because we're, you know, we're not, this isn't, a, this isn't a comment on Dorley's or Mount Gay or anywhere else, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of pretentiousness in distilling, and you'll get a lot of people that will go, you know, we won't advocate you drinking our spirits of anything other than neat or possibly with ice, or, you know, we're, Everything about us is we're, we're open and honest. Uh, the branding's playful because we are, so we don't take ourselves too seriously. We take our product seriously, but you know we're we're here for a laugh. And and, and as you found out a few times we spoke to you, we're we're about as open as honest as we get. So we tried to strip everything back. So we didn't want to load it full of you know a, a name that we that didn't mean anything to us. You know we 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 haven't got any sort of. Um, any heritage behind us of you know a hundred years yeah. worth of plantation, for instance, you know we're not we know we haven't got that kind of we haven't got that kind of history. So we wanted to sort of dictate where we went, and that's going to be the. There's no, there's no pirates or sailors in the family or anything like that. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, um, <laughs> Nor normally there's a long lost pirate somewhere in the family. Well, there, prob there probably is. There probably is. Yeah. Right. This spice drum. Let's let's dive into this spice drum. So. Uh, are these the actual spices you use on the back of the bottle here? So we've got mm -hmm. orange zest, cinnamon, mm -hmm. clove. Oh no, aromas. So what do you spi what do you spice it with? So we spice with uh, fresh orange peel, cinnamon, vanilla, cardamom, nutmeg, uh, and some anise. Um, as I said, we don't, anise. Ooh. Um, we don't back sweeten anything. Um, we don't caramel it. So it spends a couple of weeks on oak, um, which is oak stays, um, but it. Uh, it gets all its colour from that bit of time it spends with the oak, but most it's like those. With, it's um, like those wood chips, isn't it? For those that don't know what staves are, correct, yeah. Like it's, with, yeah. A dismantled barrel for all intents and purposes. Same, same, right. um, same cask as the gold's in, um, but yeah, we um, we only really do that just to take a little bit of heat away, get a little bit of uh, a little bit of character from the oak, but it's sort of a really, really minor player. The oak is in there. It's not. In fact, it, you, you've really got to go looking for it to find it. Um, and uh, and then yeah, the spices spends probably three four weeks with the spices. Um, but we're again we're, we're we're spicing with everything as natural as we can. So everything that we say on there, there's no there's no flavouring. So there's no orange extract in there. It's you know I I sit there and I zest the oranges, so I know there's no orange wow. extract in there. And uh, and the cinnamon, you know, cinnamon sticks. There's no there's no ground cinnamon in there. So everything that goes into it is. Uh, is exactly what we say it is um, and that was one of the things that was really important to us that we didn't want to we didn't as I said we didn't want to load it full of caramel and sugar but we also didn't want to just go to a flavor house and say right can we just get four gallons of this flavor and we can just <laughs> chuck it in there and it'll be you know it's easy you know we, we can get it out the door in a day 
So if we're going to do it, then let's take the time. Let's, you know, put a, put our effort into it. And if we're going to do it, then let's be, be, be honest about it, be genuine about it and, and be as, uh, be as, as transparent as we can about it. So yeah, this, everything in there is, is this smells phenomenal. This is my favorite. I've never tried this. This is, I, as I said, I resisted the urge to <laughs> try it or smell it when I was dramming it up for the guys at home. This, this smells, I mean, for, for me on the smell, I'm just going to, because loads of the guys at home and know exactly what I'm talking about here. I say this quite a lot. Uh, the moon curse. So that is Tom's uh, Cornish. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 That, that orange and vanilla. It smells it smells sort of like that. And I love that sort of profile. Really, really love that. But this, so definitely get sort of, definitely get the orange bursting through there. Subtle bit of ginger. I'm picking up the nutmeg as well. I love nutmeg. Yeah. Nutmeg on like, um, what's it? The Puss's Panko or the Painkiller Cocktail. I love that sort of vibe. Well, it start, it started out as our Christmas spice. So it was a little bit, it was heavier in cinnamon at the start. Um, and it was right. probably heavier in clove at the start as well. And it started out as our, as our um, we we're only going to release it for Christmas. Um, and then January came, we get people emailing us going, can we still buy it? Can we still have it? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we're still making it. Well, can we, you're not going to stop making it, are you? So in the end, it just, it, it kind of works. So people come to us in, in, you know, July and they'll go, oh, yeah, I can get the cinnamon in there, get the clove. In. Oh, it's like Christmas in a bottle. And we're going... Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's 38 degrees outside. So, well, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mention it earlier, but you kind of did. So you said uh, the first sort of two batches were sort of playing about uh, and then b batch three. This, for those of you that have got a bottle, I've got a little dram. This is batch number 11. So yeah. this that's how much of this stuff you've done. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. How, how big are the batches? uh batches are well, the, the early batches were 50 bottle batches so batch right. one two and three were 50 bo 50 bottle batches they're now um bat 225 wow so this is your big seller i'm assuming yeah that one yeah. that one outsells everything sort of 10 to 1 i was going to say because the white rum here is batch three yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then that's batch 11 wow I'm, right i'm gonna have some now because i want to try this with some mixes and stuff <laughs> Wow, that's not sweet at all, is it? No. That's... So it's, we, we've tried to keep it. We've tried to keep it on the sort of the opposite end of the spectrum, for want of a better term. Because you know, if you if you're drinking a spirit, I think you've got an appreciation for for a tartness anyway, and for a um, for a warmth. So the, the the cinnamon adds a little bit more warmth in there as well, which is which in my opinion is nice. But then if you're going to put it with a mixer anyway, you know, all your mixers are probably going to end up with either artificial sweeteners in there or you know two, three, four teaspoons of sugar in there. So you get so much sweetness from your mixer. Um, that it sort of um, that it brings it in that direction if you want it to be a sweeter one. Um, that that is crazy. That's the way to. So I'm just getting mixers out of the fridge now. Sorry. Um, that this is going to sound completely and utterly bonkers, but I'm really, really sorry. Mm -hmm. That to me tastes like a proper sipping rum, just with a bit of. I'm just gonna, I, I mean, flavour in a nice way, but just with a little bit of flavour added to it. That's it, a, that's it, a it me. Yeah. It, it, it hasn't got that sort of syrupy, you know, when you kind of open a bottle, I don't know, Rumbullion or, or something, it's got that sort of syrupy, cloying kind of texture to it. That just takes, it's like that's, it kind of hits you, It kind you get that rum first, the sort of smoothness of the rum, and then those kind of flavours come out. Yeah, I'm flipping like that, that's really nice. One of, the, one of the things that we said we wanted to do all along was we wanted to, A, it should be a sipping room. So because, because I was always a neat spirit drinker, we wanted them all to be able to be, appreciated me and that you didn't have to whack a load of um a load of coke in it just to be able to drink it and um, then we also wanted the flavor to be robust enough that it would come through if you were to chuck a coke in there uh, or you were to throw a ginger ale in there um so it's a it's a nice little medium or middle ground for us that it is nice drunk neat or i'll drink it neat i mean this is i've got it in and i'll have it now I'll, I'll i'll take it out of this later on i'll put it with ice and that's how i that's how i drink it um but you know lauren will drink it with a mixer so it's a ginger ale in our house um for lauren it's a if i have it with a mixer it's a coke in our house um so yeah i wanted, wanted it to be sort of foot in both camps really i've just got uh fever trees normal ginger ale out at the moment mm -hmm. there is the spiced orange there i think the spiced orange might sort of fight against it I would, yeah, I've tried, it yeah i have tried that spiced orange and i wasn't a fan of it um, to be honest, um, it felt a bit kind that of is, That is lovely. Ginger ale has fast become my drink. I've, yeah. I did yeah. used to love Coke, but I don't know if you've seen me doing these, but uh, gas really, really gets me to a belly. <laughs> yeah. So I've like really gone on to uh, ginger ale. That is flipping lovely. Especially if you can find a light one. So the, the Fever Tree one, we've, we've been drinking the Fever Tree one just lately. Before that, Merchant's Heart, if you've ever heard of them, do a really, yeah, yeah, yeah. really light ginger ale. And that one goes beautifully with it. It's Because it is so delicate and it doesn't sort of come in and just punch you in the face with ginger. 
um, it is a it is a nice it is a nicer compliment to it. I'm going to talk specifically to Kevin here because Kev, Kevin at home, uh, he's like me. We do both love that spot orange ginger ale, the full fat one, not the semi skimmed originally light stuff. That's rubbish. But yeah. the full fat one, I I genuinely think Kevin, I generally think stick to the ginger ale because I think that orange is going to fight against the orange that's yeah, in there in the rum. Yeah. I think let the rum do the work. That is belting. I love that. <laughs> so good that is so so good it's kind of it's this weird thing because i grew i'm like you I, I grew up with spiced rums i love my spiced rums but as i've got older and especially doing the rum journey my palate has dried out yeah and now i, I really don't like those cloyingly sweet spiced rums and i that don't want to hate on them window. it was we we were we were yeah. drinking more and more rums and there was a massive gap in the market for. In fact, it was it was best described to us at an event once where um, I can't remember where it, what, what, when when it was that the lady said it to us, but she said, "Oh, it's like an adult spice rum," and we went, "Yeah, yes. there it is. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is." And now it's you know we'll we'll, we'll take we'll sort of roll that line out every now and then, but uh, but it was exactly it was the words that I hadn't managed to come up with that it was yeah. it was an adult the spiced spice. rum for grown ups. So yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that. So the coke, the coke, if you mix it with coke, especially a coke zero, it tends to bring the vanilla out in it beautifully. So you, so it, it sort of takes a little bit of the, a little bit of the citrus away, takes a bit of the spice away, but it does bring the vanilla fruit through really nicely. So drinking it with a coke, it does taste like, or you, if you dilute it enough, it does taste like a, um, a sort of a kraken or a, or a sort of mainstream rum. Yeah, no, I like. I, I prefer. There is one more mixer that I want to do. I've got plenty of these, um, mm -hmm. but I do prefer the ginger ale. Ginger ale massively for me. If you can throw your curve ball, give it a whirl with a give it a whirl with a light tonic water. I've got I've oh I've got Mediterranean here. The oh, one I was going to actually rock out is um, Stratford Soda's Tropical. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Oh, I tell you what I've got. Hang on, what's this? I've got um, agave lemon tonic. No, I'm not. I'm not feeling that. Um, um, what else have we got in my box of tricks? I have got. I've, I, I did have the um, my apple, um, what's it called? Beaver Belvoir apple juice. Red oh, that's, that's, road, so that'll, that's on that's on brand. That's Leicestershire. <laughs> yeah, oh, is that what? It, oh yeah, of course, Beaver Castle. Oh, have you tried it with that? Uh, well, uh, well, uh, not that specifically, but over winter with warm up um, this is apple amazing. juice and have the spice rum with it, so you'd get like a mold spice rum punch. Over nice. Right. Let's go. Let's go for the old apple. I want to see what people. Are. This I can see comments piling in <laughs> uh, and questions and stuff like that. Uh, I think I'm with Scott's you on that one, just... Kevin. Beaver, not Belvoir. Yeah, it's Beaver. Oh, yeah, I'm right. So you're from Leicester, isn't it? <laughs> I made the mistake of pronouncing it Belvoir when I first came up here. Especially with a southern accent, yeah, it just don't work, does it? <laughs> Belvoir. Right. Let's do. Let's let's do this. I like this. Right, about one to one. So that's the uh, the sparkling. I think I think most of the guys at home will know exactly what it is because I do bang on about that quite a bit. Where are we? Oops. Uh, where are we? There. <laughs> I'm flipping out. It's hard on split screen. There we go. That's what it is. So we do like that. And we do. You want a light refresh? I've got the Mediterranean. That's the only tonic I've got because I don't really do gin and tonics. I haven't got another tonic. Well, the, the, the only reason we do it is that a lot of the spices that are in there tend to be in quite, they're quite common, common in, um, in gin botanicals. So it does, it does tend to dry it out quite nicely. Um, and it, it, it's sort of a nice alternative. It's one that we, that we do lead with. If we get someone come along and go, Oh, I only drink gin. Um, but it is a nice, <laughs> nice break. And we can go, Oh, I'll give it a whirl with a tonic. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a better taste in our opinion. The apple, I'll be, I'm not, I'll be honest. I'm not hundred percent sold on that. None? I love that apple juice. Love it. It's one of my favourite mixers. But yeah, I'm not 100 percent sold on that. Might be a the little ginger, bit boring with the citrus, to be fair. Yeah, the ginger really works for me. This, the tropical. Do you, do you know? Did you speak to uh, the guys yeah, at Rumpest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So they're, they're coming on. They're coming on next week as well. So we're oh, we're nice. going to uh, play with that. But I love. Well, I don't know where I'm going. Um, I love this tropical, like the pint, the coconut, and because uh, didn't you have a pina colada on there? Uh, yeah. Your website, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one I, I was gutted, I convinced I had some. I've got a cream soda from a local lady who does the banging cream really soda. Awesome, yeah. Absolutely amazing. I thought, yes, I'm going to do that. And that's right on the top of my list in front of me. Yeah. Anyway, and I haven't got any. I'm gutted. Mm. I've always got some in the house and I must have drunk the last bottle. I'm surprised I'm Lauren's not bought Ting out yet because Lauren, this is the one that yeah. uh, every time Lauren goes down the world foods aisle of the Sainsbury's, she comes back with a case of Ting. 
Do you like? I've got ting here. We've got plenty of ting. Rum ting. Rum yeah. ting. Is that what the spiced or the white one? Silver. Silver goes nice. Silver. Yeah, I can see that. I can completely and utterly get that. Totally get that. We like having a little play. See, so, you know, people, we, we're having this chat in my Discord community the other day. You know, cocktails, cocktails are, I think, are still a little bit beyond a lot of people at home. With simple mixes. It's all about simple mixes. Mm. I think that's what it, I think that's where the market is. I've got, I've only got a tiny amount left. <laughs> I have to buy. Them. I'm going to get the slow bottle. I'll have to buy like a <laughs> one of each. Right. I do like a bit of ting. I prefer pineapple, straight pineapple soda, but I do like the ting yeah. a little bit for this. Oh, what was going to do? I was going to do the spice paloma as well, wasn't I? Right. Sorry, I've got to do that. <laughs> oh, that's banging. That's belting. Or oh, a little bit. Need a little bit of a lime wedge in that. I'll tell you what we'll do. Just a touch of. Touch of lime juice, not too much. There we go. Like a little squeeze of lime juice. Climbers. What's everyone else? Sorry, I was diving into the comments here. Right. Uh, where do we get to? Where do we get to? Let's just, I don't know whether that's the first one, but I'm just clicking on that just for the crack. Uh, where did the inspiration come from? From the slow rum, which is mega. Oh, that's great. That's, that's, there he is. There he is. Look, it's our, it's our agricole. I'm not game. buying anything under 100 quid. It's not worth it. <laughs> um, it's, it was from from a, a history of drinking slow gin with my dad and my granddad. So it was uh, it was always going to have to be. It was always a big sort of a family thing of, um, of when we were out uh, out on a shoot. It'd be in the back of a Land Rover with a with a slow gin or at his house and a little nip. And, like, don't tell your dad. Um, so uh, so when we started this venture, it was always always a flavour that I always enjoyed. Um, and wanted to really know whether it worked with rum to start with. So we we did a 100-bottle batch um, just on a whim, threw a load of slows in there. It was either going to work or it wasn't going to work. And then we um, and we took it probably about three days before we were going to go to our first event um, and had no idea whether it was going to taste anything right or wrong or, or, or indifferent. So, uh, so, yeah, took it, sweetened it a little bit. Uh, it was really, really tart when we first tried it, and um, and yeah, loved it. And now we we just can't bring it into the house anymore. To be honest with you, in that we 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 get free it too quickly, so um, it comes right. out as a story. It goes in boxes, and it goes uh, it goes in the van, in the car, or uh, or in the uh, in the store bit. It becomes a tax write off, doesn't it? If it goes in the house, I don't need your see it that way. <laughs> right, hang on. Right, uh, is who's this? Was this Scott? No, Lee Gannon. So Ganimal, uh, sorry, Lee, we call him Ganimal. Ganimal is a distiller, but uh, is a brewer, but he also distills as well. Uh, do you see much variation from batch to batch or do you blend? Uh, we do get a bit of variation batch to batch. So um, we tend to we tend to reserve ourselves back with all of the spices that we that we use. So we'll um, we'll add more to it along the way. Um, to get ourselves back to parity, but there is there is inevitably variation between between um, between batches. You know, I, I sat down the other day and said, for some reason, this bat this batch is probably my favourite batch that we've made. And as I said to you earlier, we are trying to, even though we're trying to keep consistency in the people that you know, we get a lot of people that do buy religiously from us, and we'll, we've got a lot of repeat business for the silver for the um, for the spice, but. Yeah, as it as it does evolve and as we do go forward, we do inevitably get variation between it. And and once we you know find something that works this time, then we try and sort of carry that then forward into the next one. So it's um it's just a are you so so this is on the same sort of questions here. You know, what's the sort of aim for it? Uh, the reason why I'm asking this? Like, if you go supermarkets with this, you know, supermarkets are just going to want consistent like batch on batch, month on month. Are you going to purposely avoid supermarkets and just try and be the cool? Or, as, as, we or stand at the minute, as we stand at the minute, we haven't really, um, we haven't really got the scope to keep a consistent product, impeccably consistent. We can't, we can't do impeccably consistent at the minute because we're using natural ingredients. If we were to deviate from that and say, we will just buy a flavor from a flavor house, then you know that there's no problem with consistency because the, the silver's consistent the silver stays with it and it's you know it, it, that that doesn't really change anything um so we could keep the consistency um with the way that we're doing it at the minute the only way that we could keep the consistency would be to make a mega batch um not a mega pint as johnny depp drinks um but uh, <laughs> if we make a, um, a mega batch then we can then add to that and it can always be blended along the way 
Um, but as it stands at the minute, you know, we we kind of like that it's um, that it is a sport product, and um, and because we are trying to continually improve it along the way, and there are, you know, we still we still take feedback from people. So if people come to us, and if if someone brings this batch, and we get 20, 30, 40 people go, I loved it, but too little, really little clove, or we've got too much clove in there, or we've got too little in there, we would probably still tweak it um, if we agreed with what they were saying. Um, so it is. It is still nice to be small enough to still do that till we get ourselves to a fixed position. Um, but we don't really want to deviate away from being a small back product. So, you know, if there was if there was a supermarket conversation to be had, um, then it would be on the presumption that it was still a small batch and that it would be damn close. Um, but it will never be the same colour, for instance. So this the colour that we've got this time uh, has got a little bit more depth of colour to it than the last one we did, for instance. The flavour is pretty similar. Um, but because we don't want to get into the business of just chucking caramel in it to get the color consistent, there will inevitably be differences in color, uh, which isn't necessarily a big problem for us because we're in a black bottle. So if it sits on a shelf, you know, Joe Bloggs buys batch 11 and then he comes back and buys batch 12, unless he's got it in a glass in front of it between the two, he kind of doesn't notice the difference between the color. Um, but as far as, uh, as far as that's concerned, we don't really want to get into an artificial color conversation really. So who, who came up with his spice Paloma? Wow. <laughs> Flippy, love that. The agave, the agave in there is belting. Yeah. That's lovely. That's really good. <laughs> so simple. So for those of you at home, if you're going to make a proper drink, uh, this is taken straight off the website. Uh, so 50 mil of the spice drum, 50 mil of, I've done pink grapefruit juice. Um, so 50 and 50, 25 mil of lime juice, and then 10 mil of agave nectar. Obviously, I've made a smaller one there. That is delicious. That is absolutely amazing. I love that. The spice does come through in that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, we, haven't, we haven't released anything that's overproof yet, um, Lee. Um, there. Cool. We've got, to be honest with you, it'll, we might be a little bit of a basket case towards the end of the year because we've got quite a few ideas that we want to we want to play with. So there'll be quite there'll yeah. be quite a bit of different stuff coming from us, hopefully, in the next uh, next few months as we start sort of pulling some test batches together of stuff at the minute. Um, so I'll, I'll never say never for an overproof. Um, That's cool. If you see if you see questions that you want to answer, just go for it. I'm, I'm going to start scrolling through now. And are you are you in a rush to get off? Do, do you want to? No, it's a little really and decide she's going to wake up and. Uh, Start okay. banging on the ceiling. Right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to search out the questions. Uh, any, so I've just seen that. Any plans for an overproof? Uh, there was a couple of comments I want to put on screen about people tasting, which they absolutely love. Where I've missed that. Where are they gone? Right, Scott's a hundred percent going to be buying the silver in future. That's what we like. Uh, Thank you. Oh, love the root. So this is Susan is in Canada. There we go. <laughs> so it's, oh, ca wow. it's Canadian Canadian feedback. Oh. Uh, rhubarb and cod. Exactly right. Yeah, they uh, they are the two the two words pretty much that we had in our mind when we were developing the branding that we wanted it to be really simple and we want to just be honest with what we're doing. So we we found Spidergram, didn't we? In fact, not too long ago, yeah. we, we sat down and did yeah. a Spidergram on the branding right at the very start. In fact, it would have been January, yeah. February, twenty twenty. Yeah. And uh, going through some paperwork and found it, and two of the ones that were in there were honest and simple. Yeah. Like that, hundred percent agree with that. Uh, Windy, where it, it, don't don't ask, don't ask why it's called Windy, but Windy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's from Bristol. Uh, <laughs> loves a dude Jack on the bottle. That's really cool. Uh, Garant, what's Garant saying? Uh, love the aroma. I get orange. Mrs. Garant says almonds. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I've, well, I've got I've got marzipan in mine. So similar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good oh, shout, marzipan. Uh, we've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen that. Hang on, right, Scott. Love this. Love this. Love this rum. Best spiced of drunk would happily drink this neat. Wow. This is coming from the man that used to have uh, what was it? Aldi Old Hopkin. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's that's awesome. Uh, Moxie, uh, what's Moxie saying? Uh, spiced is fantastic, mixed with ginger ale. So he's got one. Uh, white with coke is love. White with coke is lovely. Brings out the nutty flavour. Out delicious. Nice. What's uh, who was that? Windy again. Windy. The Stratford soda spice would be lush with your rum. I've only got one spice done. I need. To, I'm waiting to get some more. So the spiced is. I forget what the 
What's she putting her spiced? I think it's ginger, isn't it? There's ginger, isn't there? Uh, I forget what else is in it. What is it? Uh, cinnamon and ginger. That's what it is. So cinnamon and ginger. Yeah. We'll be playing with those next week. So I'll, I'll have a few more bottles by yeah. next week. So I'll make. I'll, I'll use that in there. That's that's really cool. Dang. Bloody Canadians learning their, their language. Dang. <laughs> we should grab it. Yeah, have half my right. Karen, what's Karen saying? Karen, I had half my sample with Coke and the other half with lemonade. For me, it works with both. Amazing. Nice. Uh, ooh, go right. I think we have to say as well that we're um, when when we meet people at markets, they will say, oh, "What what would you suggest drinking it with?" And we obviously give our kind of preferences or how we would drink it. But then ultimately, we just say to them, "Well, if you find something you like." to drink it with then go for it like we're not going to be precious about um you know dictating what it has to be drunk with and we've had some very very random kind yeah, of got... mixes back we have, like uh... repeat customers going i need another bottle because i have it with uh iron brew iron, iron brew. spice of iron oh. <laughs> made of girders <laughs> Scottish lady in um, when we go to a we get used to go to a market quite regularly in Chilwell and she comes to us almost every time we go there. It's like oh, I hope, hope you don't mind, but I've been drinking with Iron Brew. And it's like yeah. nah, you, you knock yourself yeah, out. Do you know what? I get, what for the spiced? Yeah, yeah. I totally get that. Totally and utterly get that. Hundred <laughs> percent get that. I loved. I used to love Iron Brew. My local pub yeah. used to sell yeah. it on draft. It was amazing stuff. <laughs> draft oh, Iron Brew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was off. Um, What's the brand? Um, it's the brand that does all the random sort of stuff as well. We used to be able to get Ribena on draft as well. But yeah, Iron Brew on draft, we used to go through pints and pints of it. It was brilliant. Uh, Nat Stock. I like this. I don't know who Nat is. Nat is a first time here, I think, or commenting. Uh, honestly, the best rum I've ever drank. If you haven't tried it, grab a bottle. Uh, nice. Right, here's Geraint on his... Uh, I bought the slow reminds me of what my dad... Ex Royal Navy used yeah. to yeah. call convoy rum. Okay, something like that. Mega pint. Uh, I think we're caught up now. What? Hang on. With the style of the, the style of the bottle, do supermarkets open? And... <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know whether you want to answer that. I can sort of semi answer that. <laughs> Sometimes they will. Yes. Deal with any. Um, so, uh, so although we've got, I've got a, my, my brother works for um, quite a major one. Um, we we don't we don't deal with any supermarkets. Um, so they may do, they may not. I don't know. There'll be a lot I, more kind of stringent on um, what ingredients are going into it, and obviously, you know, the legislation and paperwork that's involved um, with that. But yeah, I don't know um, <coughs> whether they would uh, probably do yeah, something first. Grant's just put it fifty percent ABV ish. That would be awesome. I tell you what, yeah, I, I can't wait to try your the gold actually. Uh, well, the, be, the, the, the the year old one that we're trying to get out um, that we'll try and get out this week uh, this uh, this year. Um, we'll, we might release that one at cask, so that will that will probably come forward. Uh, it went in at fifty nine and a half, so it will probably come out um, probably probably close to so fifty fifty eight fifty seven. So, wow, yeah, so that would be awesome. Like you kind of sort of do, like, I th the best example I could do, give you this, is like Kit up at um, Ninefolds, you know, cottoned on to this whole um, one-off cask, single cask release sort of thing. Yeah. It's genius yeah, we'll... business, you know. It's, it's just genius marketing in business. Yeah, I mean, we, we, won't, we won't ever blend anything. So anything that comes forward um, will be, we'll, we'll take a cask, we'll either proof it or we will bottle it. <laughs> And it won't. We, we, we don't. We try not to filter too much. So, so yeah. the spice, for instance, we filter it. Um, we filter it to five micron, um, but we don't. We don't go any further. So you you do get a little bit of sediment every now and then. So we'll probably do the same thing with the cask. So you might end up with you know a, 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 a fraction of wood sediment in there. But we, we're we're trying to keep it all. Um, if it comes out of a cask like that, and we taste it and we appreciate it like that, then we'll probably bottle it like that. Because because for people like me, I I really really like that. It's like charting. Or following a brand like over the years so you've got a bottle yeah. of like i don't know 2022 2023 2024 and to yeah. see the evolution of the brand i love that i think that's brilliant for uk brands i think that's yeah. just going to be genius and that yeah that's definitely part of our plan isn't it yeah. and we yeah we we just need time to kind of do its thing with 
with the rums that we're putting away like we again we don't want to do anything artificially so um yeah and we kind of want to help create a legacy i suppose if if we can um nice yeah uh, just a couple more to dive into. Kevin, uh, who didn't go for... Yeah, you didn't get involved in this, young Kevin. I forgot you didn't get involved in this. I don't know why. <laughs> um, he loves his dead man's fingers. Uh, but we've got, we've, we're have got we slowly getting there. We've got him up to Hurstie's rock stars and all that. So he's getting there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't go for that. But he's the one with the, the business, the mobile bars and uh, the okay. numbers and all no. that sort of stuff. So... Uh, if he doesn't seek you out, I'll put you two in touch. Uh, and Grant's giving you a massive compliment here. I bought the Slow and the Spiced, which, as Steve will tell you, is really something not f- – is, is really something – yeah, sorry. Yeah, so he doesn't buy that at all. Uh, Thank you, Grant. Really good. In fact, yeah, I, so I remember that, mailing your uh, I remember yeah. mailing your order, actually. <laughs> if you, if you uh, I don't know whether you saw Kit's um, – T-shirt at, run, at the Rum Show this weekend. Did you see? Have you seen any social media from? Uh, I didn't see that. No, I saw his bottle, his new bottles and stuff. So Kit had a T-shirt printed off, uh, which had a quote from Dawn Davis on it. You know, who Dawn is yeah, yeah. Dawn, yeah, yeah. So I had a quote from Dawn, and it said, "This is the best rum that I've tasted this year." Written on there like that. Wow. So you need to get something done. Yeah, it's very clever. Uh, you need to get something like that done for great. This is <laughs> the yeah. agricole man says. <laughs> this is genius. Right, I'm going to let you two go. If you've got anything else uh, that you want to chat about or tell us, or I, I haven't put it on screen, but I thought it was a bit cheeky, but I will kind of ask. <laughs> you don't have to. You can say no, piss off, pay full price. But someone in here, I think it was Chris. Oh, right? I saw that. Bingo Ringo. Where's Bingo Ringo gone? I can't find it, but he was asking about discount codes. No, buy full price, you tight Cornish. <laughs> we not fake Cornishman. <laughs> I'm, I'm a QS, so I'm, I'm, I'm just as tight as a Yorkshireman. So. Yeah. Or, um, look, he's not even waited. Look, there you go. Order placed. Boom. Oh, nice right. Done. <laughs> loyalty. Brand loyalty. That's what you get out of it, Bingo Ringo. Nice. Guys, thank you so much for doing what we'll do. Um, bingo, Ringo, we'll, we'll chuck you some samples in of one of the others. Oh, there you go. Uh, His ping, name's... Ping a note, whichever uh, it's not popped through on my phone as to which one you've ordered, but um, fingers, fingers a note as to if you want to try one of the other ones, and we'll um, we'll drop you a, we'll yeah. drop you a, a miniature of it. Awesome. He might, it's, he's in Cornwall, so it might take three weeks to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, God, I tell you, we'll, we'll let you go. I'll get my lot. We'll stop, we'll start banging some scores into um, the Rum X app, and I'll, I'll link you to all that tomorrow. Yeah, and stuff. Probably, but yeah. seriously, thank you so much for doing what you've done. I hope it's been brilliant. My lot, I can tell, I've had a little blast uh, from this. <laughs> It's just yeah, awesome rums. Love it. Love, I, yeah, as yeah. I said to you, I love the white rum. The, the spice is, it's, the only way I could describe it is a neat sipping rum with a bit of flavour. It's just amazing. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Right up my street now. So thank you very much for giving up your Sunday night. Thanks no worries. for having us. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And no doubt I will see you. Um, are, you gonna, are you doing Rum Fest? You're going to do Rum Not Fest? Year, but we, um, I, I, I got a tongue lashing from a gentleman um, that was, yes, that was uh, championing us at Manchester, so we will be there next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know there's the Spice Drum Show on the Thursday? Yes. I don't know yes. the details, but I'm assuming it will yeah. still be quite a bit of money. But yeah, yeah. but yes, get yourself set. And then uh, I think Lauren, Lauren holds the social secretary. So uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sure Lauren Lapper's in there next year. <laughs> awesome. So thank you very much, guys. I'll I'll yeah. speak to you tomorrow or whatever. But yeah, thank you. And I can see all the uh, the thanks coming in there in the comments. So you're more than welcome to keep watching. But we'll let you go. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Now the kids are in bed, and uh, nice watch Love I- watch Love Island or whatever's on TV. <laughs> 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 thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. To the loo. Right. Let's do that so that was uh, uh matt and lauren i'm still going to stay here for where are we well at least another sort of 40 minutes or so uh, for any of my lot that's still here uh, and i thought most of you are still here if you want to crack on with the rum x because i think this is going to be uh, uh i think this is going to be really cool to do this actually get some get some scores on the rum x app get put the, get some uh, english love going on because it's mainly all german on there at the moment so this is going to be brilliant for those of you who've got it I flipping love that white rum. I really, I really want to get involved with daiquiris, but I haven't, I haven't got that. I'm going to have to get another bowl, but I'm filming on, I'm going to have to save what I've got left because I'm filming on Tuesday. So 
I'll keep that. But um, yeah, I'll do a daiquiri with that on Tuesday and then let you know what I'm thinking. So um, for those of you that have got uh, got it, if you've still got the sample, let, let's go. I'm going to get the rum. Hopefully it should be in here. I did add it earlier. The old rum X. Where's it going? Search. Lazy dog. Lazy, lazy, lazy dog. Right. Uh, lazy, 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 lazy. Where's it gone? Yes. Can you see my, can you see my dodgy photos? Look, <laughs> look in, in my hand. <laughs> can you see that? Look, <laughs> I'll, I'll update. The bottom one's not too bad. The silver one's all right. The spiced one's a bit, I've got to update the spiced one, but hopefully Oliver will uh, sort that out for me. So we we'll do the uh, silver run first. Uh, and those of you watching, I'm sure most of you do. So hang on, let me flash this up on the screen so you know what's going. Uh, Rum X. So that's that's the app. That's the app we're using, Rum X. For those of you watching for the first time um, that have never seen this before, I'm sure most of you have seen this. Where are we? Chat. Boom. Done there. There we go. Right. Bingo, Ringo's drunk on mine. Uh, that was fantastic, Steve the Barman. Thank you so much from Lazy Dog. Uh, Philip will be ordering a bottle. Lovely. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Right, I want to. I want to. I'm going to click the magical taste it button. So I've left. I should have enough to do daiquiri in this. On oh oh oh, that's the spice. Hang on, let's put the spice to one side. I thought that was the silver. There we go. Right. So we first off to do all this, we start off with the color. So obviously that's crystal crystal clear. Um, so clear goes on the old scores there. Right on the old nostrils. And I can see Matt and Laurie still sitting there. I've watched it. Go onto your app store. Um, go into your app store and just download uh, Rumex. Look for it. It's on Google. Because uh, uh, Lauren's got it. <laughs> you, if you guys want to come and stay on screen, you're more than welcome to. Do you want to come back on? Yeah? Do you want to come back on? No? I can't hear you. Until... Yeah? I've oh, sorry. it. They're coming back on. Look. <laughs> Let's bring it back on. They're not going anywhere. There you don't go. Feel, don't, no, don't feel you need to put us back on. Because now you might feel yeah, like you need like to pressure. give different feedback. Pressure. We can go if you want. You can That's slam right. it now. We've gone. I'll, 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 I'll tell you. I'll give you honest feedback. This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hide. Right there we go. That's better. There we go. No, you're, you're more than welcome. I was just let. I feel guilty because I know it's a Sunday night, and I've had I've had a few brands. It was like, oh no, don't want to do this on a Sunday. It's my day off, sort of thing. So I know it's Sunday, but you know, everyone's. everyone's no, no, we, Moxie. We, tend to, we tend to have Monday, Tuesday. As, uh, well, I tend to have Monday, Tuesday as my weekend because we tend to do at least something on a weekend. Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, farm shop, coffee shop tomorrow and all that. Hang on a minute. There's loads of people. Oh, is it just... Right, okay. So it's on. It's obviously on my Rumex because I added it, but obviously Oliver hasn't approved it yet, which is a bit... I didn't think it worked like that. Uh, as far as the photos are concerned, Steve, we can ping you over the product photos if that works for you. Yeah, that's cool. I think I, think I can update them myself. Uh, I, I know the guys on the app have to approve it but i think i can update new okay. new photos so yeah that's that's cool uh, you can if you create an account and log in i think you could do it yourself mm -hmm. to be fair once it shows up but all right so i'm gonna we'll let we'll get we'll get the voting everyone can do on there so what did everyone so communal for those of you that have tasted it um i know quite a lot of you there is at least sort of 24 25 of you have tasted it at least mm -hmm. um Give me some nosing, um, what's the word? Some nostrils. What did you pick up on the old nostrils on there? Oops. I'm, what else have we got? So I don't know, is, is that what you're looking at, Lauren? Are you seeing, can you see how this sort of works, the, the app? Are you on the app? Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, but it's not, um, it's ours there. isn't on there, yeah. So just, just pick a random rum. Just get the first rum that you kind of pops up. It doesn't matter what it is because you won't do anything with it. I know I sort of taught you through it because it's, it's, it's genius. So whatever, I don't know, go, go to your competition or whatever, I don't know. And just, oh, that's so, oh, that's <laughs> I, was, I was just looking for something good. <laughs> <laughs> all, I tell you what, don't get stuck. Oh, don't go down the four square rabbit hole because all the Germans love the four squares and there's like tons I'm, I'm of I'm searching four squares. So. <laughs> It's like, because um, I forgot his name now, but did the whole Coroni um, annual or whatever it's called, the Coroni book. So they, there's a yeah. massive Coroni contingent on there. But what, what you do, when you find your rum, you just click into it and then take, press that taste it button and then you can add. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the first thing you do is the colour on there. So you kind of, obviously, this is crystal clear, so you add the colour. But then when you go to nosing, if you click the, 
Hang on, let me get that. So you click nose in, you can click the plus button. For If a rum's already been tasted, there'll be, hang on, I forgot what it'll be. It might be a question mark or something. I forget what it is now. I can't see it because no one's ever tasted yours before. But you'll see what other people have picked up. Oh, but okay. if you click the plus button, that's when you add your own tasting notes. So uh, bingo, Ringo for here is like come up with vanilla. Uh, smell, smelling my empty pouch. <laughs> <laughs> I hope an empty rum pouch. Yeah. <laughs> am, I, am, I, very, am I dragging this down into the gutter now? So, so Geraint's gone, uh, very creamy on the nose, almost Cuban fruits and banana. I like that. I agree. Yeah, I agree with the banana on there, actually. Very Cuban. I think, do you know what, Grant? I think you're not too far because I think that's why I like it. I've got this massive thing for Cuban rums at the moment or that sort of column still rum. Mm. I agree with that. So I'm going to press the plus button. I'm definitely going vanilla. Uh, we can put uh, we can put creamy in there because it does smell really lovely. Creamy, buttery. Would you describe it as buttery, guys? I would say buttery. Buttery. I think, yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that. Buttery. Um, I, I'm sometimes I'm quite terrible at like picking out. I can pick out the tropical fruit like banana and pineapple, but then sometimes I just go fruity. I, I'm getting quite good with stung fruit actually. I could pick sort of apricot and peach out on some. That, yeah, that's that's quite that's quite interesting. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a tough one, isn't it? When fruit's concerned, I find. It's there. I'm just seeing there's other people placing orders now. Who I don't know who this is. Haggis, Haggis Roll? Haggis Roll? Haggis Roll, I don't know who you are. Uh, Haggis Roll, have you changed your name? Is that, are you who I think you are? Hang on, I can't see. I don't think you've changed your name. Where you gone? Haggis Roll. Do I recognise? Oh, the picture's no bigger. Who, Whoever you are, Haggis Roll, thank you very much. <laughs> right, Lee's got vanilla and cream. Take buttery baked goods. Stefan Meyer wrote the Stefan Meyer, that's it, wrote the Coroni book. That's the one. Cheers, Ian. Right. Am I getting anything else off there? I'm going to whack in tropical fruit because that's the generic kind of thing because there is a little bit of fruitiness to it. Right, whack that. Right. And then what we do, so once you've got your kind of uh, fruity stuff, we now sort of score each. If you can see those little slidey bars, you score each thing out of five on there. So fruit, for instance, um, is it fruit forward on there? I think it's got a nice bit of fruit. So I would go, I'd possibly go two out of five personally. If anyone's mm -hmm. going to disagree with me, shout out the comments in there. I won't disagree with that. Floralness. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really get grassy notes off that. A little... I think we've had a couple of comments sometimes about yeah. grassiness, but... Um... I tell you, I tend to either, I've never given, unless I do sort of like an agricole or something like that, I've never really given anything more than a one for floralness unless I do those. Ten. I think I'll give it a token one. But it's just to kind of really help people when they come and see it and sort of, you know, oh, I kind of like this. So I'm going for a one there. Spices. I think vanilla gets lumped under spices. So there's a bit of vanilla there. So I'd probably go two. Mm. I agree with that. Claire's, but hang on. Claire's put cream, plum, grass. Interesting. Cream, plum, grass. Okay. Uh, spices, right. Two for that. Woody. No, I'm not going too much wood on that. One out of five for Woody. Roasted, nothing out of five. Rounded, I think it's a great rounded rum on the nose. I'm going three for that. I think it's a really lovely rounded dive into that rum right so that's that so we go in the taste we do exactly the same thing with the taste it's just luscious and creamy it fascinates me this is why i want to have more in-depth chats with distillers because it fascinates me how i'm not calling that sweet but how you get that lovely luscious sweetness to a rum without adding sugar compared to some rums that have added sugar if you know what i mean i'm fascinated as that is a skill set from a distiller it really does kind of because it's not sweet but it is i don't know how to describe it it's like it gives you a cuddle as it's going down it's that, that sort of feeling yeah we always say it's, it's warming but it's, it's warm but it's not sort of fire 
so it's it it will warm you on the way down, but it doesn't sort of um, it doesn't smack you in the face like some white rums would do. Mm. Definitely cream. What's what's about other people getting on the uh, French custard? French tart. custard tart. I'm loving that. That is going. <laughs> that is going on the next That's, Instagram post about the silver. That is that is being added as a tasting note. Bingo, Ringo. I'm mm. having that. What's he put? French custard tart. I'm adding that. Didn't we have a word for that? What was that a couple of weeks ago? Grind, grind. So what was Portugal? What was the Portugal thing? Portugal uh, bun or something? What was that? Butter, butter I've never heard of it before. Um, I, French I like custard. them. I like eating them. <laughs> what are they called? Por Portuguese buns or something? Are they? What are they called? French yeah. custard tart. Right, bingo, Ringo. That's been added forever. <laughs> Boom, added. What else have we got in there? Nothing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the, that's the one. There we go. Yes. Well done. Well done. Neighbour's got a bonfire, so nose is struggling. <laughs> <laughs> that's the rum. Some... <laughs> I'd say there is some floor. I want to say honeysuckle. That's interesting. Ooh. That's from our resident brewer slash distiller who loves his Jamaican funk and high esters. Mm -hmm. Cheers, Bingo Ringo. Right. Spiced is pretty good. That's fine. Right. Um, so there's, there's definitely on the taste, there's definitely some sort of tropical fruit on there. There's definitely that creaminess, the buttery creaminess on on the taste. Adding that. Butter, buttery. Um, there was that light spice. I couldn't really be specific of what that spice is, but it's a lovely sort of Warming tingle, as you put it. Um, let's just put a spice. That'll do. Done. Right. So, the slight difference with the taste. There's a score out of five for sweetness on here as well. So, I'm going to give this. So, again, this is where this is where rum X. No, this is where it's kind of because I want to go. If I give it three out of five. It's like a six out of ten, and I think that's that's way too sweet. But again, a two out of five, I kind of want to like give a five, if you know what I mean, like a five out of ten. But I can't give half marks, so I can't do two and a half. So I'm going to go for two out of five. <laughs> I think that's I think that's there. It's lovely, lo luscious. I love that. Right, fruit. It's definitely more fruity than woody. So again, I'm going two out of five for fruitiness, floralness. I yeah, I can kind of. I think there's more floralness that comes out on the taste than what there is on the nose, actually. Oh, I see what you mean. I've got, I've got a little bit of custard then. vanilla -y vanilla. I didn't put vanilla. Vanilla, vanilla. I need to add vanilla wherever, wherever my vanilla button is. Uh, vanilla. Boom. Done. Right. What else have we got? Uh... Ex chef for you. Bingo Ringo, you've done everything, didn't you? Uh, right, hang on. Oh, go right, let's put this on the screen. We like that comment. Uh, what's he saying? This is a very good white rum, only non. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Only yes. non agricole white rum I might drink neat. Definitely not French custard tart, more pastel de nata. I don't know what the flipping difference is between <laughs> those two. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you two, I'll let you and Bingo and go fight that one out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell him Bingo Ringo. Right, uh, Monaco, the Catalans. Oh, the Catalans, don't call them Spanish. Spanish have crema Catalan. Catalan. Catalana? That's not right. Catalana. How'd you say that? Crema Catalana. Catalana, there we go. That's how I want to say it. Uh, oh, Wendy's right. Wendy's up there with the scores. All right, Wendy's beating me. So floral, uh, I'm going to give it one. Spices, two out of five. Woody, one out of five. Roasted, none. Rounded, three out of five. I think it's a really cracking rounded rum. Finish, I don't think it's long, but it's definitely medium to long finish. It's... It's still there. Uh, so I'm going to go medium finish on there. Right, Wendy's. So the scores, how this works. So you score it out of 100 for this. Mm -hmm. And it's all bracketed when you see the little slider bar at the top there. So uh, 70 to 79 is good. 
80 to 89 is very good. Uh, 90 to 99 is excellent. 100 is perfect. And then we get down. Uh, 60s is pleasant. 50s is average. Uh, 40s is drinkable, blah, blah, blah. So Wendy's put 73. Wendy, I'm going to be honest, and not just because they're here. I think that's very harsh, Wendy. I'm, oh, I'm Wendy. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going. I'm going definitely in the very good. I'm. I for me, this is a hundred percent a banging white rum to drink neat. I flipping love that neat. <laughs> Happily sit, and I'll be honest that as well, Matt. I, I actually preferred it without the ice cube. You know, you I put the ice cube oh, in really? there earlier. I prefer it without the ice cube. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, to each their own. Yeah, I I just love that as it is. Nice. Might be quite nice chilled without dilution. I might try yeah, that. Yeah. I, might, yeah. I might try that. But I lo- so I'm going for. Oh, hang on. See, when I go to right, I've, I've 85. I've got. I've already scored eight other rums. 85. So what else have we got? Right. Okay. So 80, here we go. This is interesting. Appleton Estate. Uh, the eight-year-old. I've given an 85. Worthy Park. Uh, 109. I've given 85. English Harbour, 10-year-old, I've given an 85. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh, Flor de Carnia, 18-year-old, I've given an 85. Black Tears, Spiced Rum, I've given an 85. Chairman's oh, wow. Reserve, 1931, an 85. Okay, interesting. That's fair. Yeah, that's, that's some fairly, that's, that's, that's fairly decent, not, I suppose, you know. That's, that's not bad, is it? What else have I done? Uh, 84, so I've given three. Flor de Carnia, 12. Equian, oh. Equiano and 84. The, the light one. <laughs> it's definitely up there with that for me. And Rumbar Gold, I've given an 84 as well. I'm I'm going 85. I think that's I'll take that. I'm I I quite happily try. For me, I don't know what it is. I just love white rum's neat. I, mm. I it's just that. I just love white rum's neat. I think they're, they're banging. So I'm locking that in at 85. Very good. I'm happy with that. Uh, Scott. Oh, here we go. Look, all the scores are coming in. Oh, go on, Scott. <laughs> go on, Scott. 87. Wow, we like that. Uh, Bingo Ringo's gone 79, 79 and three quarters. You can't go 79 and 75.75. That don't work. Uh, hang on, what was that? Steve, I tasted this yesterday on my system. Gave it 7.7 7 out of 10. So 77 out of 100, like that, okay? Uh, I won't score until I have more to try. <laughs> Equiano. And <I'll... laughs> so, oh, did that not come on screen? Where did that go? This is a private in-joke. But we, the week of Equiano, certain someone. <laughs> so, oh, I love that. That's that run from Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, lo- I love how he's owning his mistakes. That's brilliant. Uh, we go for similar. 85 sounds great. I'm going 86 between mm. Steve and Scott. <laughs> there we go. Locking that in. So officially saved. I've scored that in 85. Have we got? You'll have to, guys, when this pops up, I don't know how long it takes to um, uh, for a new rum to pop up, but um, hopefully it won't take long. I'm assuming Oliver just has to press a button to confirm. Uh, confirm a new rum and all that because you have to scan the barcodes and do all that malarkey with it as well. So we've done that, right? So that's that. Let's do the spiced rum now. Right, spiced, 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 spiced rum. Love these little tasting glasses. Uh, Amazon, by the way, these. Right, spiced rum. <laughs> right, spiced rum, boys and girls. Keep drinking. Oh, hang on. What's Steve, tell him how a 77 for me. Oh, shit, yeah. So, <laughs> right. Our, our, uh, our resident rum geek absolutely hates uh, Plantation. Um, puts Scores Plantation down at sort of like 40s, 50s out of 100 or four and a half, fives out of 10, you know. <laughs> so, for him to give you seven, 77 compared to a Plantation is like freaking like, it's, it's like triple, triple platinum. <laughs> I'll say that. 
That's good. Right. Uh, spiced. Windy, I feel like right gear. I'm going to put it up to 18. No, <laughs> you go, you, Windy, Windy, you go with your first assessments. You don't, Windy, we're, you know, honestly, don't we, we, don't, we don't judge. We don't judge. If I see you right. a bottle going out to Windy Bum, then I'll, I might, you know. I'll, I'll DM you. I'll DM you his real name so you can stalk him because <laughs> we, we know his real name. <laughs> right. Taste it. The magic. Oh, we've got to do the colour on this. Uh, so just, I don't know whether you've done it, but just so you can kind of see, we you get like the colour chart oh, thing okay. like on Rumex. So you kind of do that. So colour-wise, bearing in mind this is a phone screen, I'm going, this is, it's got like a little pinky, orangey, well, pinky hue to it, actually, on white. I'm going, what am I going to call that? I'm going. I'm colourblind, so I'm probably the worst person to ask on this one. <laughs> Oh, so you're never going to tell whether it's like no, consistent it's not, or not? <laughs> well, there is. It's not clear. <laughs> I'm going. Uh, I don't, of course, I can't pick the colour now. I'm going burnished. I don't know what the hell burnished is, but I'm going burnished on there. Right. So on the old nostrils. Thanks for coming, Stefan. Night. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon where you are. It's our Canadian friend. Thanks anyway, Stefan. Right. Uh, good job. There wasn't any string. <laughs> plantation joke right so on the nose are oh, tons of orange tons of orange uh oopsie it really reminds me of something as well and i can't think what it is orange cinnamon cinnamon nutmeg definitely loads of nutmeg on here oh spell nutmeg properly done let's get rid of nutmeg Right, what else can we smell? I do get ginger off this. It kind of does remind me of ginger cake. It's like the second one today I've been like that. I've got this sort of, you know, like um, like stem ginger cake. Kind of reminds me of that. Cards on the table. There's not a single bit of ginger in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're not the first to say, though. We do get, a, we do get quite a few people that will say that they, they can get ginger in there. It's the cake. If you ever like have a sort of really moist sort yeah. of stem ginger cake, it's that mm -hmm. sort of vibes. Oh, vanilla's just come out at me. Vanilla. So orange, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, ginger cake. What's that? There's something else on there. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> oh, moist. Not no. Yeah, we can say moist. It's fine. It's Sunday night. Anything's fine. It's after the watershed. <laughs> uh, where else are we in the comments? Oh, Szechuan pepper. It's an interesting one. The the chef the chef in the house has picked up Szechuan pepper. Okay, right, Steve. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Steve, this has got a massive 8.9 for me. The only spice drums in that bracket. So that's Chairman's Reserved Spice, CR. Chairman's Reserved Spice, 9. And Puss is 9.3. And Black Tears, 8.5. Wow. Well, that's, wow. My ego's been massaged enough now. I'm, uh... hey, do you want to screenshot that? <laughs> wow. That's uh, moist. That's moist. Nice. Coriander seed, cream soda. Oh, there's some good shouts on there. Right. Coriander's in there. Is it coriander? Yeah, I'm not picking coriander up. The curry. Coriander's only there. really a fringe player. We're, it, it, it's there to complement rather than to dominate because coriander's so sort of forceful as a flavour. Um, yeah. And it's not one that in cooking that we tend to like too much, but it seemed to work quite nicely with, um, with, with the blend when we were putting it together. Mm. Is that is that because a lot of gins have coriander in it for some random reason? Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? When you think about it. But... Every every gin you ever sort of taste, yeah, is coriander in that. It's not yeah. why. Why? Well, I just ran out of ideas and I wanted ninety five botanicals <laughs> and I only got ninety four. Right, I can't. I, I'm struggling. I'm, I want to. I, I think I am sort of getting that marzipan, but it's only because you said it that it's kind of there. I, I can't. I might come back to that in a couple of days and have another yeah, go. Because but. It, it was it was always Christmas cake for us. Um, I think yeah. because because you then gear your mind up for Christmas cake, it, it just sort of lends itself nicely to bring marzipan forward as well. So it might just be me, to be fair. Right. 
Right, fruit. So out of five. So scores out of five. So these are not scores. I don't know what to call them. Grade. Grades out of five? I don't know. Um, so fruit, three. Loads of fruit. Floral, nothing. Spices, three. I do get a nice sort of hint of woods, barrel sort of thing going on. So it's not much, but it's a little bit there. I'm going one, one. Uh, roasted, one. Rounded, again, I, I, I think that's lovely. Round sort of that all sweetness to dryness to spices to, yeah, definitely a three. Right, taste. Uh, right, let's whack all these in. So taste, definitely vanilla. Definitely orange. Juicy orange as well. It's not like, um. You, did you say orange peel? Yes. Yeah, see, I, I, I get real juicy orange out of that, like proper orange. Mm. Sometimes we have, like, I've got three or four orange spice drums and it's like the bitter orange. Yeah. I get out of that. This, this is like that real sort of juicy orange. Um, what do I do? Do I do orange? Yeah, vanilla, orange, uh, definitely cinnamon. To be fair, that might be the difference between using, because we do use oranges, the fresh oranges, maybe that's the difference between using oranges and orange extract. Maybe the orange extract. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting because I know I won't get it out and it's not one I've shown you, but there is one orange rum here that I definitely for 100% know is flavour. I'll call them flavour compounds, but I don't know what you want to call them. Yeah, same. Flavour compound, yeah. Cor cordials. Let's whack a bottle of this. In. Cordial. Um, <laughs> It is, isn't it? Get a bit of beaver, bottle, bottle green uh, cordial, and just whack that in. Job done. Yeah. <laughs> Mentioning no names. <laughs> right. Um, what else we got? Yeah. I, I'm getting a subtle little bit of sweetness. I'm kind of relating to sort of a little bit of caramel on there. Is it? I don't know. What's that vanilla? Is it just the spice of vanilla? Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave caramel. Just do that. Right. So, sweetness. I am... Oh, no, I can't. I'm going two. Two out of five. There's no way that deserves to be a three out of five. Well, <laughs> it doesn't even... It, that's the wrong way to think. I was going to say it doesn't even deserve to be a two. I think to give this a true reflection, I'm going to have to go one out of five for sweetness. Even though... Because I want people to look at this and think, actually, you know, that's a true. It says it in the description. I've made sure I've put uh, zero like, dosage, nil, no sugar added, because you can add all that to the, the app as well. Mm -hmm. so okay. I've already put that in. So people seeing this will know that this is unsweetened. Um, fruit, right, orangey. So it's three up there. Floral, nothing really. Spices, three. Woody, I'm going to put two. I do get a nice bit of sort of, I wouldn't say barrel aging, but that sort of touch of wood to it. The kind of, that peppery tannin, tannins, that's the word I'm looking for, just on the back yeah. of the underneath the tongue. Uh, roasted one, rounded three. I love that. Finish. That's really appreciated, Garen, to be fair. Oh. I've just seen that come through. And that's exactly because it was because it was all about memories of my granddad as well. Yeah. It was, I think he would have so been as well. That's, that's so really sweet. that's really nice of you. Thank what's you. What's he put? If I've got to scroll down, where's he put? Oh, here we go. Right. Uh Hello. yeah, I, I heard this story the other day actually. Yeah, this mm. it's really nice. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? That's cool. Did I see Havana Steve, I did. Hello, are you back from holiday? Are you still in Greece or wherever the hell you were? You're not in Greece, Italy. Where were you? Italy. Uh, he's our Northern Irish friend. Uh, gonna have to get the spice now. Hello to Lazy Dog from Northern Ireland. Gonna have to get the spice now after the gold. Oh, so you've got the gold. Wow, Steve, I didn't realize that. Oh, uh, yeah, we, yeah. Ah, I did, did yeah, yeah, one yeah, did get we, Northern we, Ireland, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's... I that's recognise names when they pop up and go, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> Steve again. I won't say his surname, but that's Steve in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um, this is a thing as well that people maybe don't think that we are... that We we talked about kind of having humble beginnings and, and stuff, that we do literally everything. So, um, yeah, Matt obviously makes the rum, but then we 
bottle it ourselves, we label it ourselves, we wax seal it ourselves, we package every order, online order up and post it out ourselves. Like we don't farm anything, the process out externally. It is all done by us too. But it's nice for names like that to pop up and then we'll yeah, go to, we'll go to we events. See... We went to uh, went to Chatsworth um, Christmas Market last year and we were doing an event there. And a guy came up to me and said, oh, you, you probably won't know us, but I bought um, I bought a bottle of silver and a bottle of slow. And I said, oh yeah, where are you from? Oh yeah, from Newcastle. Oh yeah, and I knew, knew who he we was. Knew. We knew what he'd already sent out. And we, we sort of, you know, we sat and had a, a 20 minute conversation because he bought everything from us. It was it was really great to to have conversations with people that come out and um, and, and do buy it and, and, and want to speak about it. Nice. Right, so, right, scores. Just so, so I do add a little note to my scores when I do a spiced rum. So I relate, so even though I've got equated rums on that 85, say, to Appleton and all that malarkey, I do sort of class spiced rums differently. So on my spiced rum scale, I've given this an 88 out of 100. I think it's that good. That is perfectly on my palate now, without that sweetness, without that cloying. It is just like a neat sipping rum with flavour, without that cloying sweetness. I love that. Absolutely love that. Uh, So that is belting. Right, let's just dive in. I saw some other comments here. There was one from Scott about his wife. Where did that go? Uh, His wife can't. Mrs. Mrs. Scott, Mrs. Newbury, wherever she is. Uh, You can drink the silver neat. Yeah. What it said, which is very, very nice comment. I can't flip and see it, but yeah, something like that. <laughs> right, hang on. If I start at the bottom and scroll up, I can see other stuff. Right, bingo, Ringo, agree with 88. Mogsy, Dan, what's Dan saying? Uh, generally, amazing product, showcasing UK brilliantly. What can be done with properly hard work? Respect to you both. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Steve O's in Italy. That's cool. Home this week. K, K's here. Have tried both of my samples and definitely going to be purchasing a couple of bottles. Uh, so if you, if you send out a bottles to York, that's uh, that's K. <laughs> definitely want to try and slow. Let's see, Chris, what's Chris saying? Chris, Chris, Chris. The spice drum is beautiful. Mm. Uh, haven't spent the evening drinking them both. Neat. They are stunning. We'll need to order more soon. Lovely, jubbly. There it is the wife. The wife doesn't drink rum, always pulls a face, and she said she could drink the silver neat. What about the spice drum, Scott? <laughs> oh, Dundee. Well, where was this? You should unblock the drain with that. <laughs> <laughs> like a not sweet Dundee marmalade. Interesting. Ooh. Cool. I haven't had that for flipping ages. Wow. Nice. I say, you know, that's that's lovely. I, I want to compare the sweetness while I'm here, might as well, to... Black Tears, which is an, another completely unsweetened. I know completely different profile, but I haven't had it for ages. <laughs> That's interesting. I would... I would say the black tea feels slightly sweeter. Bearing in mind it's unsweetened. It sounds stupid saying it's sweeter when it's unsweetened, but... The black tea hasn't got the feistiness of the... And your spices aren't feisty, but there is that sort of luscious... Warm, cuddle yeah. sort of feeling coming down. Yeah. Whereas, you know, with the black tea it's chocolate, it's coffee and a little bit of pepper in the background. The black tears, and it is unsweetened. There is no sugar in it at all. It just feels a little bit more viscous, a little bit more luscious, if you know. I think they're, they're, a, they're, a, they're a Cuban aged rum, aren't they? I think is their base spirit. Yeah, it probably stands to reason they would carry a bit more, um, a bit more sweetness um, forward from a base spirit right from right from the start. Yeah, because that isn't it something I've, I can't get my head around how Cubans work, but. It's unsweetened, but it, it it might equate to like six or seven grams per from really? residual sugar. Something, yeah, something like that. I can never get my head around Cuban spirits of how it really, really works. Um, even though it's unsweetened, their residual sugar is or is, res, residual ferment and distill is still a little bit sweeter in some rums. Yeah, and and I'm not a distiller. I don't understand that at all. But that's 
suppose it's an excuse for us to go for a distillery tour in Cuba. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Road trip. I love that. I tell you what, I know she hasn't come out for a few weeks, but Mummy Barman's famous in her own right. Mummy Barman's going to be polishing that spiced off with ginger ale. I know she is. She's going to absolutely love that. Uh, what else? Have we got any other comments in here? Guys, if you have got any more questions, I know numbers are dropping now. It's getting bedtime with all that for a lot of people, which is cool. Uh, if you have got any more questions, do pipe up in the comments while the guys are here. Uh, What's Nick saying? This is why I've been broke since I discovered Steve. <laughs> I need to try this slow. Uh, grew up with countrymen, feed him slow gin on a cold morning, and now I'll have to buy all three. <laughs> well, you, 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 don't forget the fourth one as well when that's out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's Karen? Karen? I pulled a face neat, but after I got over it, the taste was very nice. I'm a mixer all the way at the moment. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough, Karen. Mm -hmm. We don't judge. What did she? Oh, she... what? So Scott's wife didn't get the orange, Mrs. Mrs. Newbury. Ah, uh, maybe you needed batch one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's all I get on that. Well, not all I get, but that's interesting. Right, I I think uh, I think we've caught kind of caught up with the comments. Yeah. Uh, what's Geraint saying? Uh, if spiced, if the spiced remains, right? Yeah, you have to translate Geraint a little bit here, right? If the spiced reminds me of anything, I would go with PX, much sweeter, but again, at Christmas in a glass. He likes his PX sherry as well, does our Geraint? <laughs> right, uh, I'm going to uh, sort of call it quits there. Ten o'clock, I think that's a, a decent one. I, I don't need to go too much later. Don't forget next week, boys and girls. Uh, we it's Black Top Week, Black Top Sunday. So I've, I'm accumulating rums that we're going to be sort of tasting. I've got Steve O. I know you're still here from Havana, Steve. I've still got your Gosling's Reserve, which I have actually tried. I did try at the rum show now, so I know what I'm in store for there. I've got HMS Victory, which I kind of uh, found earlier. Uh, there we go. That's in my little stash. So that might that might as well get cracked mm -hmm. next Sunday. Uh, Pusses will come out to play. Black Tot will come out to play. Uh, what else? There was another blended. Did you get a bottle of this? No, we didn't. We didn't even I, get I've, to try it either. I've not cracked it yet. I've I've tried it. I did try it at Rumfest, but I've not yeah. cracked it yet. And bear right. in mind, it's a blend of blend of Jamaica by Bados, Guyana, Venezuela, Trinidad. Sixty three percent. I think that sort of classes as a navy rum, so that might get cracked next week. <laughs> so we're going to have a bit of a laugh and giggle with uh, Black Tot Sunday next week. Um, mm -hmm. But guys, thank you very much for watching, and Lauren and Matt, thank you so much for staying on That's all right. this time. Uh, nice I know. I know there's going to be some orders piling in. I'm 100% going to buy the slow rum next week uh, from you and top up, top up that silver rum because I, I want yeah, a constant bottle of that silver. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. But just thank you so much for doing what you've done tonight. Absolutely. It's massively appreciated. Wish you all the luck for the future. No doubt we'll see each other very soon as well. Yes. Um, but yes, thank you very much. So no everyone say goodbye to uh, Lauren <laughs> and Matt. Thanks again. Uh, and I will see you all next Sunday. Uh, for for Black Top Week. All right, take nice care, off. folks. Thanks, see guys. You. See you, ladies. Bye. Bye. Let's take them off, and I'm just gonna do, just gonna finish the stream. Uh, thanks for a great show. Thank you, thank you. Been lovely, great show. Uh, Decky, good night or good show. Lazy God dies. I've got passes one five one. Ross, night all. What's Ross? Fantastic work. Brilliant. Right. So I'm going to call it quits there. I'll speak to most of you in my Discord as well. I'm just going to leave this running for a couple of seconds uh, just while all the comments and the thanks are piling in there so we get those on screen and the stream doesn't uh, fit though. Um, get rid of those. But yes, Lauren and Matt, if you are still watching this, thank you so much for doing this tonight. I uh, didn't expect you to stay on that long, but it's massively appreciated. Um, and I just wish you all the luck in the future. So uh, yeah, that's it from me tonight. Thank you so much. Mummy Barman's going to be in here tasting these in a minute. I know she is, uh, but I will see you next Sunday, eight o'clock for more Sunday Rum Day Black Top Week. Toodaloo! <laughs>